Hi everyone, Angela here with Pampered Chef, your consultant, and I'm here today coming from my kitchen, the Servi Family Kitchen, um, to give you a quick tour and demo of one of the most time-saving devices that Pampered Chef has to offer you. This is a product that we've had out for just a short time, it's fairly new, and I wanna show you a little bit about it and make a meal with it tonight and just to give you a quick demo so you can see how that goes, okay? So first I wanna just review the product itself real quickly. Um, this is what Pampered Chef has come out with in the pressure cooker world. So uh, it is a quality piece of equipment for you to use in your kitchen. And some of the safety features that I wanted to review are, first I wanna point out the handles down here on the bottom. They're nice and secure so that you can lift it easily from countertop to countertop. And then the other thing I wanna show you about safety is the pressure release valve. So I'm gonna open the lid here and actually let me plug it in so you can hear the sound it makes. So when I open it, you can hear it's telling you it's opening and then the lid is off. And so looking at the lid right here, we have the pressure release valve and then we have the pressure release button. And the beauty of this is that whether you release the pressure manually or automatically, the steam coming from the pressure cooker is way back here in the back, nowhere near the button that you need to press um, so that you won't get burnt when you're releasing that pressure. And then over here we have the little red button that shows us when the cooker has come to pressure, that button will rise up. And that's letting you know that the pressure cooker the quick cooker has pressure in it and you don't want to open it so that there's no explosions. Um, and then when it goes down, once the pressure has re been released, you know that it's safe to open your lid. I also wanted to show you the inside. There's a silicone ring in here and this ring you want to remove after each use and wash it. It is dishwasher safe, but the lid itself is not dishwasher safe and you do not want to submerge it. So you just kind of wipe the inside out with a wet sponge little soap and then dry it off, okay? Because that's not submergible. So, and then going back to, there it's talking to us again. Going back to the front of this unit, I want to real quickly bring it up close and show you, give you a little peek at the front of this guy. So there you can see a little bit of a view of the front of the pressure cooker. And let me tell you what this thing can do for you helps you cook dinner so fast in your kitchen. So it has settings. And the beauty of our quick cooker is that you just choose the setting for what you're cooking and it does the adjustment for you. So by that, I mean, let me grab my glasses so I can see. We have the sear setting. So if you wanna put a meat in first and sear it prior to cooking, you can sear it first. I did that the other night with our chicken Parmesan recipe. And then we have a steam setting with white rice, brown rice, or whole grains, where you can choose which one of those you wanna use for the steam setting. It actually is a slow cooker also, so you have a slow cook setting. You can put your crock pot to the side and have one tool that does both jobs for you. And then we have a proof setting. You can actually proof your own bread right here in the quick cooker. And then over here, we have a chicken setting, a pork and beef setting, a fish and seafood setting, soup stocks, chilies and stews, and a dessert. Fabulous cheesecake right here in the quick cooker. So good, so yummy, no cracks at all on the top. And then up here, the buttons are for, um, if you have to use a custom setting and the timer so that we can press uh, the buttons up and down if we want to change the time setting on it. And I'll show you that when we do our meal now. And then also the pressure, you can lower or um, raise your pressure levels. That's for the custom settings. So this is a keep warm and your off button, and this is the start button. And then one other thing before we cook our food, let me just show you what we have inside here. The beauty of this is that these accessories can nestle right inside your quick cooker for storage. The quick cooker comes by itself, or you can buy it as a set with the accessories. And this is our spring form pan, and that's what you would use when you're making the cheesecake or other desserts. I'm gonna set that to the side for the moment. And then we have, that's still kind of wet for my dishwasher. All of these items are dishwasher safe, by the way. 
So this is a wire rack that we're gonna be using today and I'll show you how to use that in just a little bit. And then we also have the ceramic pot and today we're gonna to be using that to put our rice in there. So I'm gonna set that down as well. And then we have the cooking inner pot that you'll be doing all your cooking in. And in here there is a line that shows you the maximum level that you want to fill it so that you don't overfill it and have problems there. So those are the accessories, all dishwasher safe. And let me give you a little demo of how you can use these accessories today. So the first thing I'd like to show you is the recipe. This is the cookbook that comes with the quick cooker. It has quite a few recipes in here and you can find more at pamperedchef.com in our recipes tab. But we're going to be making the chicken and teriyaki a chicken teriyaki with rice. Okay, so let's start cooking. So I'm gonna go right from the directions and uh, make it simple and quick. Show you how fast you can make your dinner at home. Okay, so the first ingredient shows us, or tells us that we want to whisk in the ginger, the soy sauce, the mirin, which if you've never used that before, it's like a sweet cooking, um, sauce and I found it in the Asian section of my grocery store honey and garlic right into our inner pot so I am going to use those ingredients I've went ahead and pre-measured things just to make it a little quicker for our demo so the first one is ginger I'm also doubling the recipe so it calls for one tablespoon I have grated some fresh ginger right in there I actually didn't measure it but there's approximately two tablespoons since I am doubling the sauce, we love sauce in our family, so we're gonna just double this right up. So there's the ginger. Fourth a cup of soy sauce, I have doubled it. There's a half a cup. These are our measuring cups. They are great. There's a whole set of them, all your typical sizes, and they nestle together for easy storage in your drawers. And then the third ingredient is the mirin. Now the mirin, I have what are called our measure all cups right here for you to see. And there's actually three sizes. There's the regular, the mini, and the petite, and they are sold individually. But these are really great tools because they can measure liquid on one side. So you actually use the blue side for the liquid measurements. It has cups, ounces, tablespoons, teaspoons, and milliliters. And I have, let's see, what did it call for? It called for two tablespoons, so I have four tablespoons of mirin sauce in there. And I'm gonna pour it right into our quick cooker. And then I wanna show you, the other side is the red markings. I don't wanna drip it here, but I'm gonna push this down, the inside plastic, and you can actually flip this over and now use this side to measure the items that are sticky. So for example, um, butter, peanut butter, honey, we're gonna use honey right now, um, cream cheese. When you're wanting to measure things that are a little bit harder to get out of a measuring cup, you use this side and then you just flip it over and I'll show you right here actually with the honey. There's four tablespoons of honey right here, nice and sticky. So we're gonna flip that over and then you take this end and you just push it. Could you see how I just pushed that forward from the bottom up? Let me go this way, maybe you can see better. Let's see if I can. Sorry, <laughs> always gotta have a little bit of a fumble when you're cooking, huh? Well, that one's stuck right now, so let me just show you on this one. You would just simply take it and push this up like that, and it pushes the sticky ingredient right out for you. And then you can take your spatula or whatever you're using to scrape off the extras. So if you're using a butter or especially peanut butter. It's nice too for when you're trying to count specific um, calorie intake or things like that because you can know exactly what your measurement is there versus just scooping out one tablespoon and kind of guesstimating it. Okay, the last ingredient we need in here right now is garlic. So I wanna show you our garlic press. This thing is fabulous. Um, you can never have enough garlic, especially in our home. So this is the garlic press. You do not need to take the peel off of your garlic cloves to use this. It will press it right through and then you can scrap, you know, scrape out the garlic clove peeling. Um, this little tool comes with it as well. I like to call it the Barbie doll hairbrush. And you can use that to scrape out those the garlic peel. And then when you're done with it, you can actually use this side, the hairbrush side, 
to poke right in the holes for cleaning. So it's great, it comes with it and it sits right on the inside here. Now, because I wanted to move quickly, I did go ahead and peel my garlic cloves today, but trust me, you don't need to. I'm just trying to move efficiently for you. So I've got one in there. It calls for two garlic cloves for this recipe. Uh, so four, because I'm doubling. I personally chose to put in quite a few more than that. There's a little bit of peel here still, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. Let me get these guys in here real quick. Let's see, this guy's a big one. There you go. Two down, a couple more to go. I can actually probably put two in here this time because they're a little bit smaller now. I'm a dental hygienist by day, camper chef cook by night. So my hands tend to be a little bit weak. It really isn't as hard as it looks to push these. I just don't have a lot of strength since I'm scraping people's teeth all day long. So there we go, garlic is in. Oh, it smells wonderful. Now you can use a whisk. I already have a dirty spatula, so I'm just gonna use this. We're gonna simply stir it. Just mix it up a little bit. Nice and good. Get that honey spread around. Whoops, a little splash there. This is real life, people, real cooking. Just like your house, mine can be messy too. All right, so there we go. We've got all our sauces in. The next thing it tells us to do is add the chicken right on top of those sauces. Now this recipe calls for one and a half to two pounds of bone in skin on chicken thighs or legs. I bought chicken thighs with the bone in. I took the skin off because that's what I wanted to do. So you can do what you wanna do. And I also have some people in my household that don't like dark meat. So I took some chicken breast and just cut it up into strips and I have several pieces of white chicken breast in here to replace some of the thighs. So I think I put three or four thighs and then uh, I believe it was the equivalent of two chicken breasts. And I'm just putting all that right down into the pot. Nice and easy. Oh, it smells good already. All right, so let me just put this in the sink. Okay, so now it tells us, this is where that wire rack comes in handy. We're gonna take this little wire rack and put it right down in there. You wanna make sure all three feet are sitting on the bottom. So let me see if I can give you a quick peek what it looks like in there. Just chicken and sauce and the wire rack sitting on top of it. Okay, now the directions tell us to add the rice. I have one cup of rice here. I'm gonna put it into the ceramic bowl that is one of the accessories that you can get for your quick cooker or you can purchase it as a set. And then I have one cup of water in the measure all. So I'm gonna dump that right over the rice. Now I just want you to know normally I probably wouldn't use all three of these measure alls at one time just cause it's more dirty dishes than I really need to have. I just did it for purposes of the demonstration. So you can reuse it easily and just flip it over to do the sticky side if you'd like. All right, so there we go. We've got our rice and our water. And I'm going to put the clear or the gray silicone lid right on top. It has little venting holes, you can see that. This is dishwasher safe. I'm gonna slip that right on top. And then we are going to, oh, I'm missing one piece. Let me grab it. This little wire rack also comes with your ceramic bowl. So um, what's nice about this is you can set the ceramic bowl right in there. Whoops, my silicone lid came up. And then you just take it and slip it right into the quick cooker like that. Now when your quick cooker is finished and you remove this meal, it is hot. So you don't wanna just pick this up with your hands. We have these great little micro grips right here. They come in gray now, mine are red because they're from a past season. So you can use these just to lift out your rice bowl. It's really great for if you're cooking um, like a polenta, you can put your meat on the bottom, your polenta in the bowl, there's so many different uses. And our website is great at giving you ideas for what to use your products for, this product and, and all others. So anyways, there's our little micro grips, okay? So, Let's see, is there anything else I wanted to say? I think not. 
We're gonna put this lid on here. It just simply sits right on. There's an opening in the back that you line it up with and you twist it and that's as easy as it is. And you heard it make the sound, so you know it's closed. All right, so now our directions tell us. Lock the lid, which we just did, and select the chicken poultry setting. Adjust the time to nine minutes and press start. And that is all there is to it. Um, I'll show you that, but first I wanted to mention, if you have forgotten to take your meat out and dethaw it before you come home for the day to cook your meal, the beauty of this is that you can actually put your chicken or your beef or whatever it is into the quick cooker, still frozen, you still set it for the same amount of time that your recipe calls for, and the cooker adjusts the pressure that it gives off. It, it takes longer to come to pressure, I guess I could say, um, so that it adjusts for that frozen meat. But either way, it's just set, it's done, and you are um, good to go and play with your kids or visit with your loved one while your dinner is cooking in the kitchen. So we're gonna go ahead and press. I know you can't see it from there, but we're gonna turn this little dial. So this is how we move from setting to setting, and I'm just following the little blue light here. Probably should put my glasses back on. It's getting bad. And setting to setting. So now my blue light is right there on the chicken poultry setting. I'm gonna hit time, and I'm going to bring it down. It started at 15. I'm gonna bring it down to the nine minute mark. And that is it. We're gonna press start. And in about, let's see, the recipe tells us that it takes a total of about five minutes prep time and a total cook time of 34 minutes. So the pressure cooker will come up to pressure. Your little red button here will rise so that you know it is pressurized. And then it will, um, this one manually releases, I believe. It says, wait till the timer is up and let the steam release naturally for 10 minutes. And then after that, press the steam release button to release any remaining pressure prior to opening. So you would just press this button right here. And that's as easy as dinner gets. So it is definitely one of my top new favorite tools. And we're going to enjoy this tonight with some fresh steamed broccoli. I'll probably use my micro cooker and make some broccoli for my family. And that's it. If you have any questions regarding this product or any others, you can always contact me. You've got my information there in the party that you're in right now or on my uh, business page on Facebook. Um, my email is angespamperedchef at hotmail.com and I'm Angela Servi, Independent Pampered Chef Consultant on Facebook if you need to look for me there. Thanks for letting me come into your home tonight. I hope that you've enjoyed this demonstration and I hope that you have a wonderful evening. Thank you.